13, and beginning in verse 1, we have the relationship of branches and vine, or vine and branches. It's a wonderful relationship, and of course one that God leads out in. Thinking of the role of a vine, you would think that it's pretty insignificant, insignificant, but actually the role of the vine is of far more importance than we could ever imagine. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, and note the last phrase again, for without me ye can do nothing. Now the Bible tells us in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. There's two types of Christian people. They're the I can'ts and the I can's. The I can'ts are not abiding in Christ. The I cans are abiding in Christ and therefore can do all things through Christ, which strengthens them. My grandparents, for 40 years, had a vineyard. They raised grapes in California in a very small town called Kingsburg, California. That's where I was born and raised. I remember one year because they became convicted, they didn't uh, like selling their grapes to Gallo for making fermented grape juice called wine. And uh, they didn't sell to Welch's. I think Welch's makes their own grape juice. So they decided to make raisins. And I remember one time going down and um, seeing this unbelievable crop, the first time I'd ever seen my grandfather cry. He was so taken back by the blessing of God upon their vineyard. But being down there and working in the vineyard, there were so many feet apart what we called vines. The vines were like the tree, okay? The trunks went down into the ground and then as it came out of the ground, there were what were called branches, which we called canes. The canes were wrapped around wires that started at the first vine in the row and continued all the way down the whole entire row, no matter how long it was. If you, uh, it, it's always astounded me as you drive to the San Joaquin Valley and you see the vineyards there because they go... For, they go so far that it, does, it looks like they're, they're endless. I, I could imagine 40 acres, but I couldn't imagine 40,000 acres. And when we would go through and we picked the grapes, we would use what were called knife cutters. And as you went down at a certain time of the year, the harvest time, you would expect to find fruit on the branches. But the fruit would not be there were it not for the vines. And so Jesus is using the illustration in John 15, and, and by the way, Israel was referred to as a vineyard. God the Father was the husbandman. Jesus was the vine. He has and always will be the center of the Christian life, both for Old Testament believers and New Testament believers. He is our source of all life. And so as the vine, he is saying, you need to abide in me or you will not be able to be productive in your Christian life. And by the way, that is the goal that God has with all of us. To be pro fruit producing Christians. And there's different types of fruit that the Bible talks about. The Bible mentions that we are to produce. But we cannot produce anything if we're not connected to the vine. What usually happens is if a vine uh, somehow gets disconnected, you know, a tractor goes through and uh, it, it's on the ground and, it, and one of the plows 
pulls on it and jerks it away from the vine and it becomes disconnected, that becomes dead and they take them and the Bible says they gather them and they cast them into the fire. They're burned. It's not talking about losing salvation. It has nothing to do with that. This illustration deals with not even salvation. It deals with after salvation. It deals with being productive as God's people in our Christian life that when God comes to the vineyard, he finds fruit. He wants something from each of us when he comes again. And so the role of the vine is to provide it life itself to the branches. Without the vine, the branches are incapable of bearing any fruit at all. Philippians 4.13 again says, I can do all things which strengtheneth me. So we understand the role of the vine, that without Christ, we have nothing. Without being saved, then there's no possible way to be productive as Christians, we must have Jesus. Without Jesus, we cannot produce anything. So we must be connected to the vine. What does that mean? Go back to John 15, verse 1. And Jesus says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. Interesting that he says, I am the true vine. It means that there's no other vine. There are a lot of counterfeits. There's only one way to God, and only one way to be product productive in the Christian life, and that is to be connected to the true vine. Jesus is the true vine. He says, my father is the husbandman. So God the father is the husbandman. He's the farmer, if you will, of our lives. And Jesus is the vine to produce all of the fruit in our lives that he's coming to receive one day when he returns. Verse 2, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now what does that mean? Does that mean, again, that you lose your salvation? No. What it's saying is similar to what we preached on last week with the potter and the clay, or two weeks ago, and then also what we talked about with the servant and the... And, um, the, the master and the servant, that without Christ, being connected to Christ, we can't produce anything. And so we're of no value to God anymore. And so what, we are, what God does with us is he takes us and he places us over in a place of uselessness. Because we're no longer productive. But as we are pr producing fruit, the Bible says he purges us. Now, the word purge is a, re relates to clean, cleaning. It relates to um, pruning. Vines have, again, what we call canes or branches. And those branches have little shoots that come off some which produce and some which don't. And so a good farmer will go through and will look at those that are not producing and will cut them off because what they do is they suck the, the, the nutrients and they take from those that are producing and they affect the crop. And so God goes through our lives and he looks at those things in our lives that are not producing, are not helping in produce fruit. And he prunes them. We used to have at the bottom of, of the, the vines what were called suckers. These were branches at the very bottom. Well, they're never, they're never going to produce anything because they're not up high enough and they can't hold the weight, so they would cut, we would cut those off. Pruning is important. In any kind of plant, any kind of tree, and especially in a vineyard. We are all simply branches. We have value, and we are plugged into the vine. 
but we will not be productive unless we allow his purging. Just like the clay can't say to the potter, stop! Why are you treating me like this? We should not say, please God, don't, don't prune me. Don't purge me. It hurts. I don't like this. Allow God to cut the rough edges off, to purge your life, that you can become what he wants you to be. Verse 2 says, he, Every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So the idea is that God wants us not only to be productive, but more productive. It's a continued progression in the Christian life. We're not to become unproductive at any point in our lives. God's goal for us is that we start out producing, we continue to produce, more, and we continue to produce even more as time goes on. So our entire life should be producing fruit for the Lord. That's his purpose and his plan for our lives. So what are the roles of a branch? What's our role? In verse 4 John 4, 15, of John 15, Jesus put it this way. He said, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. A branch should abide in the vine. Turn to Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, because we, we also are our local church. And in Revelation chapter 2 and verse 4, Jesus writes a letter that he sends to the pastor of this church, and he expects the pastor to read to the congregation and to make changes in their lives. In verse 4, he says, I, let's actually read verse 2 to 4. He says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars and hast borne and hast... Patience, and for my name's sake, hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Now, it, at first look at this church, they look like they've got it going on. They're hardworking, doctrinally sound. They're patient. They've gone through some difficulty, and they've made it through. They've, they've endured. But as God gets down to the brass tacks, he makes this statement. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. And then he says this. Because thou hast left thy first love. What does that mean? That means they had stopped abiding in Christ. He wasn't as important anymore as he used to be. Do you remember when you first got saved? How fresh everything was? Do you remember how excited you were and how you couldn't get enough? But then over time, he became less and less important. And life got busy. Folks, when we do not abide in Christ, we will not be productive. And he was saying, you've, done, you've got a lot going for you. But really, you're spinning your wheels because you're doing it all without me. And you can't produce fruit that way. Go back to our text, and we're going to look at a few more observations. John 15, another observation. A branch is worthless on its own. Life, potential, and significance comes from being connected to the vine. So in other words, what defines us as believers is Jesus. He's who defines us. We are nothing without him. And without being connected and in close relationship with him, we are going to dry up 
and we're not going to produce a thing. We've got to be connected to him. Or nothing happens. It's important to keep a close relationship with him. But let me, let me make it very clear. That doesn't mean that you're in church only. Now, I, I don't believe you can abide in Christ and not be a part of his local church. Because if you're abiding in Christ, you're going to be involved in those things that he wants you to be involved in. However, church is not abiding in Christ. Now let me explain. Your relationship personally with God is different than your relationship with the fellowship of the saints in here. You are to have a personal relationship outside of the church with Christ. And that's more important even than being in church. But you can't abide in Christ without church. Okay? So they go hand in hand. And so it's important to be close to Jesus. When's the last time you read the Bible? When's the last time you prayed? When's the last time you produced fruit? When's the last time that you felt clo 